Station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we're ready. New York Daily News. This is Mission Control, Houston. Please call News. Station for a voice check. Station, this is New York Daily News. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. How about us? Hear you perfectly. On the five, five by five. All right. Break it, break it. So, Ron, you're on the line? I am. It's a tough time for America right now, Ron, with the debt ceiling and two foreign wars. You know, lots of people down here are, are beleaguered and losing a little bit of hope. Now, I don't, I don't mean to start you off with a tough question, but you're in a unique position as an American, you know, up there in space. You're representing all of us and what's best in all of us. And you have a great perspective, you know, being up there in space. And I hate to start the interview like this, but I don't have a lot of time. But what would you say to your countrymen down here to try and keep their hopes up and, and you know, keep them, keep them pushing ahead with the American dream and what it's all about? Well, I mean, I would simply say our, our country has been through a lot of tough times, uh, you know, with, this is no exception. And, you know, every single time, without fail, we've pulled through it stronger than we were before. And we've, we have a lot to be proud of. Uh, we, we have a, w a wonderful nation. Uh, we have amazing accomplishments. Uh, this is one of them. This uh, amazing facility here, this research facility, this orbital research facility is making a big difference on Earth. And, uh, and the United States of America has, has a big part of that, and they made a big contribution to that. Not just, you know, it's not just for the, the, the sake of science and research and space exploration, but international cooperation. This is, you know, 15 diverse nations working together to accomplish this. This is a this is a really big deal. This is a really big accomplishment, and it's something that we should be really proud of. Ron, talk directly to the American people. Get, 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 would you say stay strong? Would you say what would you say? You know, keep keep the faith. I would say I would say do what we've done throughout the history of our nation, and that's persevere through the tough times and to come out on the other side stronger than we were when we started. And uh, that's what we do. That's what it is to be American. Tough times and stay the course, and that's what we. Ron, how do you feel about the end of the uh, the, sp the space shuttle program? Well, I think it. I, I'd like to look at it as a end of a chapter in, in our nation's history, uh, an end of the chapter in space exploration. And what my hopes are, and I think all of our hopes are, is that by closing this chapter, we are opening a new chapter and opening a new era in space exploration, an era which will see us leaving low Earth orbit and exploring our solar system. And opening another one, a chapter that will see us leaving our solar, uh, leaving our orbit and exploring our solar system. Great. Uh, so, I, I understand, wh why is it so important to have people in space, Ron? Well, I think space exploration is important in general, and I think it's important to have people, to have humans in space, because uh, for a number of reasons. One is the, from the, uh, the exploration part of it, but also because of the research part of it. I mean, we are conducting experiments on board the International Space Station that will not only enable us to go further in our exploration of space, but are make, uh, the experiments that are making a huge difference and will make a huge difference in improving life on planet Earth. Everything from in ways to, to provide clean water, more food, more efficient uh, fuel, fuel uh, efficiency. And so, you know, the list goes on and on and on of the research that is being conducted in this very, very unique place where, you know, a place where r the research being conducted here can, simply cannot be conducted anywhere else because of the microgravity environment. We are conducting cannot be conducted anywhere else. What is it like to be in microgravity for six months? 
Well, it's it's interesting. Uh, it's you know your body takes a while to get used to it, and you know the human body is an amazingly adaptive thing. And right after you get here, you, your body realizes it doesn't. It, it's the heart doesn't have to work as hard. Uh, you know the muscles don't have to work as hard. Uh, you don't need a skeleton anymore. So you start to have changes in your body that that necessarily aren't so good. Um, you start losing bone density, muscle mass, etc. So there's things that we have to do to combat that. That you know we have to do exercise and whatnot, but but living and working in space, I mean, is, is just absolutely wonderful. You know, I commute to work, like, I guess like Superman would, you know, I just get out of my uh, bed and I fly off to, to my to my job. So it's, uh, you know, we go from, and the, and the space station is enormous. It's a it's a huge complex. So to get from one place to the other, we're just flying flying around. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. And it's amazing how fast you adapt to that. It's amazing how fast it just becomes second nature and you don't even think about it. Um, and then you wonder, hey, how did I just get from point A to point point B and then you, you trace those steps and you see you know all the things that your entire body did not just your feet you know your hands and and your legs and everything else uh, to get you from one place to the other it's really it's it's really a neat adaptation Ron, any words? I know you're a big Giants fan for Tom Coughlin and Eli and the bunch I mean we just uh, football season's right around the corner what would you say to them? Talk directly to the, to the G-Man. I, th I, I think I would say that give them the same advice I gave America, and that's uh, straight, stay tough during the difficult times, and you'll come out stronger on the other side. Stay tough through the difficult times, and you'll come out stronger on the other end. Did you see Derek Jeter's uh, 3,000 hit, by the way? I, I did not uh, see that. Of course, I've heard, obviously heard about it. That's a wonderful accomplishment, a great milestone, and I, I wish I, I wish I was able to see it. But, but no, I'll, I'll get to see it uh, when I get back to Earth. What, what would you? Uh, any message for Carmel and the kids? Well, just uh, you know, I, I like I try and do all the time. Tell them how much I love them and miss them, and and how you know any any big accomplishment or a big endeavor like this requires a lot of support from the home front, and uh, this is this is really no exception. You know, there's no way that any of us could do what we do without tremendous support from home. So, just a lot of gratitude and thanks. <laughs> What's the thing that you miss the most, Ron, besides your family and your wife and kids about Earth? Well, you know, it's it, it's interesting. When I got ready to fly and I realized I was going to be up here for a long time, I started noticing things like, oh, you know, I, I'd hear the sounds of the birds or I'd hear, you know, smell smell the, you know, the flowers or whatever. And I think, you know what, I'm going to spend six months without hearing that sound or smelling that smell. And, and you know, we have a really, really wonderful, beautiful planet. And, uh, you know, I, I just miss living on Earth. It's a, it's definitely my favorite planet. And, uh, uh, you know, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful place that we need to take care of. <laughs> Last uh, important question here. You know, Ron, I know you're a man of faith. Um, how does being on Earth, I mean, how does being on the space station and seeing, having that perspective of God's creation or, you know, the maker's creation, whatever you, whatever you American believes in, how, do you, how does it influence your faith, and 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 does it does it influence it at all? Well, well, I think it does. I mean, it does in a way that when when I don't think it's possible to look at our Earth from space without being moved in some way, and when you get struck by the, just the undescribable beauty, the indescribable beauty of of our planet, and you really feel this 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 overwhelming gratitude that we've been given this incredible, incredible gift. And, you know, it fills you with some sadness, though, too, when you think about how we've treated that gift and, and you know, all the problems that we have. And, you know, I think, you know, the, the, even the HD TV doesn't do it justice to, to see the view that we have here and to see, um, you know, how fragile it is and to see that paper-thin atmosphere and to realize that's the only thing keeping us from the, you know, from, that's the only thing keeping every living thing on our planet alive and how precarious it is and how fragile it is. And it's, it's, you know, it's, I, I don't think you can help but be moved and be, be, have this feeling of gratitude of what we've been given if you see this with your own eyes. And I wish everybody could. And I wish everybody could see this with their own eyes. So we're trying to do the best we can to uh, help everybody see this th through our eyes and to be able to describe it as much as we can. Ron, thanks so much, pal. 
Same here. It was great talking to you. Say hi to everybody back in New York, especially uh, in that wonderful city of Yonkers. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the New York Daily News portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KBTX-TV. Station, this is KBTX-TV. How do you hear me? Station hears you loud and clear. Excellent, guys. Uh, the, the Aggie hat, thank you very much. We appreciate that. We knew that was up there. <laughs> no doubt about it. All right, here we go. Colonel Mike Fossum, Colonel Ron Guerin, we thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. First off, you two are in the midst of your first expeditions on the International Space Station. Six months each for you guys up there. Colonel Fossum, can you tell us a little bit about some of the research and the work that the crew is doing up there? We're in a period of transition right now on the space station. Uh, with the departure of uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis a couple of weeks ago, uh, we've, we've moved out of the assembly phase and into the utilization phase. First step in that, though, is putting away the thousands of pounds of stuff that they brought up here. And we began uh, really turning up the heat this week on, the, uh, on uh, getting a lot of the facilities. And in some cases, it was literally turning the heat up begin activating a lot of the science uh, science facilities. You know, I completed the first round in a plant growth uh, experiment today where one uh, a set of the plants were growing in zero gravity, the other set were growing in a centrifuge, spinning in, in exactly the same temperature and conditions, you know, at 1G to simulate being on Earth. Funny, to come up to space to simulate being on Earth. So that's just an example. We're activating a, a furnace facility going through some of its stabilization checkouts right now, and really from one end to the other, we're, we're bringing these systems up and online. At the same time, we're the guinea pigs for a lot of the studies ourselves. We're bones, muscles, those kind of things. You gentlemen rode up on the uh, Russian ship. It was the first time for that for you all. Can you talk about the differences between going up on a shuttle as compared to going up on a Soyuz craft? Yeah, you know, really, there is a there is quite a difference. You know, the space shuttle is this massive, you know, vehicle that you that you're riding inside, and it's shaking, and it's it's you know, there's just just tremendous amount of force. Um, the the Soyuz, on the other hand, it's it's kind of it's it's a much smaller vehicle. You're you're crammed in there really really tight, uh, and it's almost as if you're wearing it. So you're you're wearing the spacecraft, and and you're launching it. They're both wonderful experiences, but they're very very different. Uh, but the, I guess the common theme between the two of them is, you know, it takes a lot of energy to get something uh, into into orbit. It, it takes, you know, you have to propel it to the velocity of five miles a second. So, uh, you know, that takes a lot of energy and a lot of force. And in both cases, you feel that there's a, there's a lot of power behind you. Now, Colonel Guerin, before he put the hat on, I'm not sure if you were aware that Colonel Fossum was an Aggie. Uh, he may have made it abundantly clear in the last mission and the work that you guys have done on the expedition. Can you talk a little bit about how a guy from Yonkers and an Aggie get along? Well, that, I'm, well, that's news to me. I, I had never known that uh, Mike was uh, was an Aggie, uh, but you know the, what we have in common is we're both Aggie dads. Right. So uh, you know we've we uh, both have a great love of that uh, university. Uh, I didn't I didn't get to go to that university, but uh, we both have a great love. Yeah, well, I didn't get to go. <laughs> I, didn't get to go. <laughs> I could be an Aggie. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, but to balance you know to balance the universe out though, from uh, in my personal uh, family's point of view, you know, my Aggie's identical twin is also is a Longhorn. So we we had to balance out the equation a little bit. So that's uh, a house divided and a family divided and a spaceship divided, probably, with that. Uh, talk a little bit about Colonel what you brought up, Aggie related, uh, besides the hat. If you brought anything this time. Oh, you bet. I've got the uh, I've got my 12th uh, man towel for uh, foot when football season starts. I've got some pennants. I've got uh, an, an extra Aggie ring with me for a uh, very dear friend. And uh, so there's uh, there's it happens to be a little bit of maroon up here. Now, Texas A&M didn't land one of the retiring shuttles. They would bid for it, but the engineering school is due to get a shuttle simulator. Colonel Fossum, what does that mean for the students and the instructors there, and, and how quickly are you going to be uh, up to Aggieland to help out once that simulator gets up and running? 
Oh, I can't wait to get back up to Aggieland. Uh, actually, a trip to A&M was one of the last things I did before I left Houston to go to uh, go to Russia to uh, complete the final preparations for launch out of uh, Kazakhstan. Made a quick run up to A&M, and I can't wait to get up there and see it. I'm really excited that A&M got the uh, the shuttle simulator. That's that simulator was a big part of our lives, Ron's and mine together, actually, because we flew together on uh, STS-124 three years ago. So we spent a lot of time in that space shuttle simulator preparing for that mission. And I think it's really exciting because the, the students and faculty will have their hands on some real hardware that was a critical piece of our nation's space program for, for that particular piece of hardware for about 35, 37 years. So it's, and it's, it's real stuff and they can actually reprogram it to fly it as other vehicles. And it'll be a great thing to, uh, to use to learn with real hands on. You guys watched the last shuttle come up to you and then leave for Earth one last time. What did that mean to you, too, and has it even sunk in yet that the shuttle program has come to an end? Yeah, I mean, that, that, was, a, that was bittersweet. I mean, we realized that we were witnessing history uh, unfold before us. We realized that, you know, a chapter of our nation's history, a chapter of, uh, of space exploration was closing. But, you know, we are filled with confidence and optimism that, you know, that closing of that chapter uh, leads to the opening of a new chapter and a new era of space exploration that will see us leaving low Earth orbit and exploring the solar system. No, you I, two I, are both on Twitter. Like You've been sending out messages and pictures from space. Uh, Colonel Fossum, you took some amazing shots. That included uh, the one with the northern lights going off in the sky. You watched the shuttle go back to Earth. You took those pictures, and you're sending those messages. First off, I guess, how has social media changed things for you guys up there? Oh, it, it changes things because we're able to share the experience uh, in almost real time. And, and that's just really, really amazing. You're not, we're, you're not limited and we're not limited to, uh, you know, the short interviews that we're able to do like this because we don't have time. But sometime in our spare time, we can put together our thoughts, send out pictures and our thoughts associated with those. And, and we're really, I think we both feel a deep sense of history that we're, we're in the closing pages of a 30-year history, you know, of the shuttle program. And we're very, very fortunate to have lived through this time. But recognizing also that most of America, most of the country, only knows us as a country that flies space shuttles on a fairly routine basis with a lot of people coming and going from space. And that chapter is, has, has ended. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how things move in the, in the you know, years to come. Now, the last time you two were in space, you were joined on a discovery by Captain Mark Kelly. And obviously, uh, the Tucson shooting and his wife's injuries, they had an impact on the entire nation. Can you guys give some perspective, though, on how that incident and, and Mark's uh, going through that impacted the NASA family? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. It is a NASA family, and I've still got my uh, Peace Love Gabby bracelet on uh, in support of her recovery uh, and, and in support of the, the uh, other victims of that terrible tragedy. And, um, yeah, we, we all felt that. Uh, Gabby's a dear friend of all of ours, and uh, and not not just that. I mean, she's done a tremendous amount of uh, work for, this, for her space program. She's been a big uh, proponent of our space program. She believes how critically important space exploration is to the future of not only our country, but the world, um, and uh, you know that all affected us all uh, personally. The next trip for Aggieland, uh, uh, to Aggieland for an Aggie dad and an Aggie. When are you guys next planning on uh, coming to College Station? Well, I'm going to be going to a football game for sure. I don't know. If Mike, Mike won't be back. Will you be back no, in time? I'll okay, back. he'll be back in time. Yeah, yeah I'll be I'll be back by the uh, by the end of football season, and look forward to uh, getting back up there to uh, see my son and a lot of good friends up there. Well, when you guys come back, we'd love to spend some time with you as well. But for now, uh, have a a fantastic rest of the mission and uh, your message for Aggieland before you go. <laughs> Giga Maggies. Whoop. Whoop. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you when you're back on Earth. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, New York Daily News and KBTX-TV. Station, we are now resuming operational communications.